All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Neill. I'm a graduate student at Duke University, working with Felipe de Brigard and also John Pearson. Um, this work was also done with, in collaboration with Paul Henne at Lake Forest University. I'm gonna be talking about the role of confidence in causal judgment and how confidence might actually be estimated along with causal judgments. So to give you an idea of why this matters, I'm gonna go through a quick example. This is also a plant-related example. So you're new to plant parenthood and you got a new plant, but you notice the leaves are starting to yellow. So you ask your friends for some help. Your friend one says, okay, I, your plant is yellowing just because it needs some water. The lack of watering is causing it to yellow. Your other friend says the plant needs fertilizer. So your friends disagree about this and they both seem pretty confident. And so since you don't know any better, you just go to choose the cheaper one, which is water. So you just water your plant some more and see what happens. It turns out a week later, your plant dies and you're very sad about it. So understandably, you're probably pretty mad at your friends. Um, so I think this example demonstrates a lot of different things, namely that confidence matters. And so there's a couple different reasons here. So first off, people disagree with each other confidently all the time. And if you look at psychology of causal judgment, you might not immediately actually notice this just because as psychologists, we tend to study strong and reliable effects on causal judgments where it seems like people tend to be making mostly normative decisions. Um, also, it shows that we might be more likely to believe and act on confidence judgments. So if your first friend was less confident about the water, then you might have been more inclined to believe your second friend and made the right decision about the fertilizer. Um, also, in addition to, be, to blaming people for making incorrect judgments, you can also independently blame them for being over or underconfident. So again, if, if you can say, if you, this person only made a, confident, or a judgment with less, confident, less confidence, then I just would have acted differently and things would have been better. And as I'm gonna hint later on in the talk, this might even provide a window into the mechanism of causal judgment itself. So all of this kind of points to the basic idea that confidence really matters for how causal judgments impact behavior in the long run. But we don't really have an established theory of how confidence works, how it's estimated, and how it impacts behavior. So what we're gonna do in this talk is I'm gonna go through some background on the different theories about how causal judgments are made. I'm gonna make a simple proposal, given these theories, how people might additionally make confidence judgments. And then I'm gonna go through an experiment where we test these predictions. So how do people make causal judgments? Um, I'm gonna introduce another vignette here. So this is actually the same vignette we're gonna use in the experiment. And in this vignette, there's a character, Joe. He's playing a simple casino game where he's drawing balls from boxes. And the idea is there's some green and red balls in the left box, and there's some blue and orange balls in the right box. And so you just have to kind of blindly pick in each box. And how it works is if you get a green ball and a blue ball, then you win a dollar. If you get um, a red ball or if you get an orange ball, then you win nothing. And so Joe, he closes his eyes, he pulls out a green and a blue ball, and lucky him, he gets a dollar. Uh, and we ask participants in these kinds of scenarios to what degree did he get the dollar because he got the green ball from the left box. And since we're asking participants about the green ball, here I'm gonna call the green ball the focal cause, and I'm gonna call the blue ball the alternate cause because the blue ball is just some other thing that might have also caused him to get the dollar. So counterfactually sampling models are a very prominent model uh, of causal judgment. And in this kind of scenario, they provide a pretty simple intuition as to how this works. Um, so the idea is that we wanna estimate something like a causal effect of the green ball on Joe getting a dollar. So what we do is we think of some examples in which Joe got the green ball. So here we think, okay, he got the green ball and just based on chance, we're imagining a scenario in which he also got a blue ball. So this is exactly like the actual scenario. But then we can undo him getting the green ball and say, okay, what would have happened if he got the red ball instead in this possibility? Of course, since he got the red ball, he no longer gets the dollar. And so we would typically say that this means the green ball made a difference. Um, but since counterfactuals aren't fully determined, it makes sense to actually iterate this process over and over again. And so you might imagine some additional scenarios and kind of uh, aggregate probabilities this way. And so the idea of counterfactual sampling models is that given these different probability distributions, we're gonna make some kind of contrast about them. 
to say how much does manipulating the green ball cause an effect in getting a dollar. Um, I have an asterisk here because in some of the models, and in one of the models, this is literally a, a difference in probabilities, but um, there are a couple of different metrics for difference making that we're going to be looking into here. Nevertheless, you end up with something like a causal effect for each different possibility. And so you can see in some cases, the green ball makes a difference to getting a dollar, and in some cases, it doesn't. So you end up with a probability distribution like this. And causal judgment or counterfactual sampling models of causal judgment say that the way that people estimate causal judgments is they just take a simple average. So in this case, in 70% of the time, manipulating the green ball is enough to change whether you get the dollar or not. Um, here, um, we're going to look at five different measures of difference making. I don't have time to go into the details of all of them, um, but I wanted to point out that these two models at the bottom here, the necessity sufficiency model and the counterfactual fix loss model, these are the two models that actually were proposed with this kind of sampling mechanism in mind. The other models, um, they're just kind of other models that have been proposed in different contexts, but they also provide measures that would make sense for people to estimate through sampling. So we're going to look at them as well. So um, it's been shown over and over again in the literature that counterfactual sampling models are actually really, really good at estimating these kinds of causal judgments um, and, and simple vignettes like this. And it could be argued that it's almost, they, they almost perform too well. So we have so many different theories that all seem to perform very well, and it can be hard to make very precise distinctions among them, at least in the cases that we're looking at here. So um, here is another reason that I wanted to ask, how do we weigh confidence? And presumably, uh, if we look at model predictions of confidence, maybe this will help us tease the models apart. So to give you an idea of how our model actually works, um, I'm going to ask, which judgment would you be more confident in? So in one case, we can think of um, a set of possibilities where no matter what you imagine, in basically every scenario you're imagining, the cause makes a kind of moderate difference to the effect. And this is pretty precise around every single possibility. In contrast, you might imagine um, in some of the possibilities, the cause makes no difference at all. In other possibilities, it makes a very large difference. And so here, in both cases, you have kind of a moderate difference overall, but there's a difference in spread in the distribution. And you can think of the same thing for a very low causal judgment or a very high causal judgment. And so what we're going to say is these very wide distributions, the imprecise ones, we're going to call low confidence. And the very narrow distributions, we're going to call high confidence. And this is a measure that's been called um, precision models of confidence that's been used over and over again in other areas in research and metacognition. And so again, the idea here is that the precision of the estimate of causal strength is what's driving people's estimates of confidence. Um, here, I've got four different measures, actually, for the, the width or the entropy of, of this distribution. So three of them actually agree to a very, very strong extent. Um, so the standard deviation, the variance, and the entropy. And they basically say that if your causal judgment is basically in the middle, if it's 50-50, then people will be less confident. But if the cause always makes a difference or never makes a difference, then people will be much more confident. Um, we also looked at co uh, coefficient of uh, variation, which is the standard deviation over the mean. And here, this, this measure says that confidence should just simply increase with causal judgment. Um, and even though this looks like a kind of qualitative difference, empirically, we didn't find many differences between these different models. So I'm just going to show you results from standard deviation. So um, to test these different hypotheses, um, we're going to use causal judgments as a test of these different measures of difference making that I showed you earlier on. Um, and this is just replicating previous work in the literature. Um, to add on to this, we're going to look at confidence ratings. And again, the confidence ratings are going to test not only does this measure predict causal judgments, but does this measure estimated through a sampling mechanism provide a valid estimate of confidence. So to test this, we gave people vignettes exactly like the one I showed you. Um, so there's always two kind of causes. They can vary in probability. But we also asked people, in addition to their causal judgments, we asked them to rate confidence in those judgments. Um, we had about 3,000 participants on Prolific. They, they were all from the US. Uh, we had six different vignettes. Some of them had good outcomes. Some of them had bad outcomes. We used the conjunctive and structure, as well as the disjunctive or structure. And um, I'm using a Gaussian process model to analyze this data, which I'd be happy to talk about in the Q&A. 
So to get straight to the results, what do we find? So in terms of causal judgments here, how I'm gonna be showing you this data is um, the x-axis is gonna be the probability of the focal cause, and the y-axis is the probability of the alternate cause. And so what we found is that we found an abnormal inflation effect, which has been found in the previous literature where when the focal cause gets really rare, so when it's really hard to get the green ball, people think the green ball is more causal. Additionally, we found a supersession effect, whereas the blue ball is more common, people also think the green ball is more causal. Um, overall, we kind of found these two effects just spread across the space here, and they were pretty strong, but there were kind of nonlinear interactions between them. Here are the model predictions, and as you can see, even though there are some differences between the models, all of them were able to significantly predict causal judgments in this scenario. In terms of confidence, we actually saw very similar effects. So we saw an inflation effect in confidence where people were more confident when the focal cause is rare, and they were also more confident when the alternate cause was common. Um, here, we also see a slight nonlinearity non on the right-hand side of this plot. Um, I'd like to kind of investigate this in future research to see if it replicates, mostly just because the confidence effects are very small. So I'm not sure if that actual, that, that second part would come out. Um, here are the model predictions for confidence. And as you can see, even though the causal judgment predictions were really similar, the predictions for confidence are very, very different between the models. And this has a lot to do with the U-shaped curve I showed you earlier. Um, so in this case, um, one of the models no longer predicts confidence. We also have results from a disjunctive structure where the character only needs one, the green ball or the blue ball. Here I'm gonna go through the results rather quickly because basically the patterns reverse in this structure. People think the green ball is more causal when it is common and when the blue ball is rare. Um, here are the model predictions and we saw that three of those models um, significantly predicted causal judgments. In terms of confidence, we, again we saw a parallel effect as with causal judgment. So we saw a deflation effect where people were more confident when the green ball was common. Uh, we did not see a reverse supersession effect for confidence, and I'm not sure exactly why there's a difference between there, um, but I'm trying to investigate that in future research. So here again are the model predictions, and we can see in this case only two of the models significantly predict confidence for the disjunctive structure. So overall, um, what we found here are model correlations um, for each of the two structures. Um, most of the models did a very good job of predicting causal judgments in both structures. And this was, again, found in previous research. But if you look at confidence, it turns out that only one model was able to predict both causal judgments and confidence in both structures. So what do we take away from this? Um, I extended counterfactual models to confidence. I replicated four effects on causal judgments, and we found that confidence exhibited similar kinds of effects. And um, still only one of the models was able to predict both causal judgments and confidence, even though many of the models were really good at just predicting causal judgments. So I think some, there are three kinds of ways you can interpret this. Um, the first, which is the naive way, is just to say, okay, maybe the necessity sufficiency model is just right, and the other models are wrong. I think it's definitely too early to say this, so I wanna avoid kind of making this conclusion. Um, and I think future research should definitely look at this. Another thing you might be able to say is maybe people are weighing confidence non-normatively. Maybe they're using some kind of heuristic response even though they have full information. So they go under the sampling process to get this distribution, but they're just throwing it away. Um, I think this is also pretty unlikely because um, it's unclear to me why people would go through kind of an effortful, like fully Bayesian way of estimating causal judgments just to throw away the uncertainty information. So the way that I'm trying to interpret these results is basically that perhaps people are estimating causal judgments using these similar kinds of difference-making metrics, but maybe there's something wrong about the sampling processes that we've been assuming in estimating those metrics. So that being said, thanks. Um, I wanna thank my collaborators, Felipe de Brigard, John Pearson, and Paul Henning. Thank you. Do we have anything online? Okay, if we don't have any, um, I guess I have a question. Yes. Um, so I guess in, in this session we have seen 
two different kinds of causal judgments. So there is like a line of research that uh, looks at the way people learn about the causal world. So you learn what is the causal association between uh, coffee ground and like how well your uh, pink roses are going to grow. And so this is kind of when people are trying to estimate causal strength. Um, and I guess the kinds of judgments that you are interested in in this research are judgments uh, of like to what extent does it feel right to say that the green ball uh, caused the person to win the game? Here, yeah, it is not really a learning process. Like we already know how the world works, but we kind of want to, we still feel like it's better to say that maybe the green ball is a cause rather than saying that the blue ball is a cause. Um, and so with that being said, uh, here you are interested in uh, like var variability in people's judgments. Uh, not, not, not directly, but your, your measure kind of presupposes that because this is a sampling process, there is going to be variability in people's judgments. Uh, and also there's going to be variab there's variability in confidence. Sometimes people are, are very confident, sometimes they are very unconfident. Um, and so I guess I was wondering to what extent, the, like if anyone has looked at whether there is a difference in patterns of confidence uh, in the kinds of experiments that you've just described on causal selection mm -hmm. and patterns of confidence in like more standard experiments in, in causal learning. Because uh, you might think that, you know, the causal learning experiments, we have a stronger intuition that there is one right answer, whereas for causal selection, it's a little bit more ambiguous. Yeah, that, that's a really great question. Um, actually, there's quite a bit more research on confidence in causal judgments in terms of causal learning. Um, and I think the reason is, is because there's, there are some simple ways to look at confidence in general causal claims. And so a lot of the research there has to do with kind of the size of your data set and the reliability of your data set. So if you have a very large and reliable, reliable data set, you can be really confident in whatever causal strength estimate you provide. Um, whereas if your data set is small or maybe you, even if it's large, it's just unreliable, um, you'll be less confident. And so there are, there are Bayesian models that do a, re a very good job of predicting confidence in those scenarios. Uh, I think what's very special about this case is if you look at the vignettes that we have, we give participants complete information about the scenarios. And so there's absolutely no uncertainty. And so any, any um, confidence, any uncertainty, so any, any confidence rating below full confidence is completely internal. So it has to be generated from some kind of sampling process or measurement error or something like that. Um, and so the fact that we kind of see variability and systematic variability in these kind of causal judgments uh, reflects the processes that they use. Okay, let's try uh, one more time if there are any online questions. And there's one, one more online question. Uh, so given your research on confidence, do you have any guideline for how to improve the scale or an interface for asking causal questions? Um, that's also a good question. So I have a, a prior paper kind of looking at um, whether confidence relates to gradation and causal judgments. Um, and so the idea here is, is maybe what people mean when they give a causal judgment of say 50%, what they're saying is, I think that this is causal, but I'm not completely sure. Um, and so the, the issue there is that maybe there's some kind of conflation in between confidence and causal judgments. And this is actually one of the things that people have looked at in the context of causal learning. Um, in the context of singular causal judgments, what I'm mostly interested in at this point, um, I think it motivates a pretty strong set of methodological um, tools that you should do. So you should measure confidence and when you, when you do measure people's causal, causal judgments, you should try to give the people a way to dissociate confidence and causal judgments. Um, because if you don't, you could just be measuring confidence when you think you're measuring causal judgments. Um, in terms of really strong kind of methodological claims, I, I don't wanna make anything like that, but um, I do think measuring, measuring confidence and things like reaction times are gonna be really beneficial in, in terms of interpreting people's causal strength ratings. Thank you. All right, and our final speaker is David Kinney, who will talk about uh, a trade-off between compression and informativeness.
I'll just need I'll just need my adapter. Hold on one sec. 